Good afternoon, people of God. Don't mind about my true name. You can call me Mr. Exposer. The Bible in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11 tells us not to take part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to expose them. And this is exactly what I'm about to do. Hashtag expose the falsehood in the teachings of one of your most beloved preacher, Mr. Pastor Dr. Oga Chris Oyakilome. Now, most of you know Chris Oyakilome as a super intelligent man of God, but this is the real Chris Oyakilome. From obvious lies like this. God's got nothing to do with it. It's your own body. Masturbation is about you and your body. And uh, God is not offended by it. To lies like this. When Jesus came, he fulfilled the law and then abolished it. Most, if not all, Chris Oyakilome's teachings are full of lies which are poisonous to your soul. That is why our title is Christ Embassy Church is the sole abattoir. An abattoir is a slaughterhouse for animals. But this one, Christ Embassy, is a slaughterhouse for souls. Hallelujah. When one preaches lies, he is killing people's souls. Today, the Holy Spirit is going to use my lips to diagonize the subtle lies in one of the ceremonies of Pastor Chris, the master of deception. Now, listen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we study the Bible, if we're not careful, we can miss a lot of things because of a lack of understanding of certain facts. For example, the teachings of Jesus. What are those things in his teachings that are applicable to us? And what are those things in his teachings that are not applicable to us, even though they're nice and beautiful? Hallelujah. Uh, Chris says that what are those things in the teachings of Christ that are applicable and not applicable to us, even though they are nice and beautiful. This is a lie, because there is no scripture which says that in the teachings of Christ, there are some things which are applicable and others are not applicable to us as Christians. Everything in the teachings of Christ is truth and therefore applicable in our lives as Christians. When we look at John 12, 48, our Lord Jesus Christ says that this very word I'm telling you is the one to judge you on the last day. He didn't say some teachings or some word I'm telling you is the one to, ju to judge you in the last day. He said this word. That means everything he says. So there are no things Jesus uh, told us or Jesus uh, tells us in his teachings that are applicable and others are not applicable. Jesus is not a joker. He cannot tell us something which is not applicable in our lives. Everything he was telling us, every word in his teaching are applicable in our lives. When you read John 8.31, he says that if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. If you hold to my teachings. He didn't say, if you hold to some of my teachings, you are really my disciples. So, uh, Pastor Oyakilome's claim that in Jesus' teachings, there are things which are not applicable to us as Christians is a false statement. It's untrue. Everything in Jesus' teaching is applicable to our lives. 
is just reducing Jesus's teachings to to being nice and beautiful. Jesus did not say things just which which are just mere nice and beautiful. Every word he meant every word. Every word is applicable to our Christian life. They are not mere they are not they are not teachings which are mere nice and beautiful. No. All the teachings of Christ are applicable in our lives. Hallelujah. So we continue. And then, if they're not exactly applicable to us, what do we gain from them? These things are important. It's like the Ten Commandments. You know, some people say, some Christians say, I obey the Ten Commandments. Well, the Bible tells us that you're not supposed to obey the Ten Commandments. Brethren, this one takes us to lies number two. Chris uh, Oyakirome uh, says, the Bible tells us that you are not supposed to obey the Ten Commandments. There is no scripture which says you are not supposed to, to obey the Ten Commandments. Let us turn to Hebrews 10 and verse 28 and see what the, that scripture tells us about the law. Hebrews 10, 28, it reads, Anyone who has ignored and set aside the law of Moses is put to death without mercy, without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Chris's statement that uh, uh, we are not supposed to obey the Ten Commandments is a wrong statement, is a misleading statement, because this scripture is very clear. Anyone who ignored and set aside the law of Moses, the law of Moses, of course, includes the Ten Commandments, is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Hallelujah. So, backed by the scripture proof, uh, Chris Oyakalemi's statement that uh, we are not supposed to obey the Ten Commandments is a misleading statement. It is lies. Hallelujah. Now, when you say that, an unlearned Christian gets irritated. It is the fundamental of the Ten Commandments. If you can keep the Ten Commandments, every other thing is okay. Ten Commandments, very important. I try to obey the Ten Commandments as much as I can. No. <laughs> you see, that's saint's knowledge. He hasn't even read the Ten Commandments. But because he's trying to cover up for his spiritual bankruptcy. So he insists on the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor Chris is saying that the person who, who insists on the commandments of God, the one who insists on obedience to the law of God, is uh, covering up his, uh, scripture, his spiritual bankruptcy. In that statement, that man is trying to make someone like that, the one who, who is attuned to the obedience of God's law, he is one is, is trying to to make such person inferior. He's trying to make such person doubt uh, that obedience to the law of God is the right way to is the right thing to do. Hallelujah. So don't be scared by such statements. If you are uh, if if you have been blessed to understand that the law of God has to be obeyed, don't listen to such statements that you are. Uh, a, a spiritual, uh, you are spiritually bankrupt. That's just a statement to scare you or, or, or even uh, propagate doubt in your heart that probably the law of God has not to be obeyed, which is not true. In every organization, we have laws that govern uh, such organization. Even in our families, we, th th there are laws that govern our families. I know you heads of families, you have laws that govern your, your families. Now, if uh, uh, Chris says that the law of, of God 
uh, was done away with was abolished. Now, how we go, go to your judges? God has to the judge us versus his law. If there is no law, there is no way the Lord will judge us. It is uh, people like uh, Chris Oyakilome who are spiritually bankrupt because they don't believe in uh, scriptures like uh, Hebrews 10, 28, which tells us, like anyone who does not obey the law of Moses who will be put to death on the witness of two or three. Hallelujah. So it is, uh, it is uh, Pastor Chris who is uh, uh, spiritually bankrupt, not the person who believes in the law of God, the Ten Commandments inclusive. Hallelujah. Ask him, what are the Ten Commandments? The seven days shall thou... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, understand... Now, okay, m maybe I should just let that land. Talking about the Ten Commandments, because someone says, well, ah, they have cancelled all the good things. <laughs> I didn't cancel anything. The Ten Commandments were given by Moses when the old covenant was ratified for the children of Israel God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses to deliver to the people and then he gave him other ordinances by which the nation of Israel should live when Jesus came, according to the scriptures, now we have all this in several teachings, you can ask for the various tapes and they will show them to you. When Jesus came, he fulfilled the law and then abolished it. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Chris, let me call him the celebrated master of deception. He is telling lies that when Jesus came, he fulfilled the law and then abolished it. That's what he said. But that's not true. When we go to Matthew 5 and verse 17, Jesus himself says, Do not think I, do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them hallelujah that's a clear uh, indication that that uh, the statement which pastor Chris says that jesus came to abolish the law is a false statement is untrue hallelujah if you believe in scriptures you will believe me that it, that statement is untrue hallelujah so all of the commandments, the Ten Commandments, the rest of the commandments, and all the law of Moses, according to the Bible, have been abolished. Because that law was based on the old priesthood that was established for the first testament are you hearing this the testament had to have its priesthood that presided over the law and once the testament was cancelled and replaced with a new one hallelujah uh, I don't know whether where yeah, pastor Chris gets what he preaches but I'm very sure he does not preach the word of God. He is preaching his own mind. Because there is no scripture which says that the Old Testament was cancelled. The Old Testament and the New Testament coexist. Hallelujah. That's why New Testament books like Hebrews 10, 28 and the Romans 13, 8 to 10, 
Uh, such New Testament books still reference uh, the law of Moses, which is in the Old Testament. So the New and the Old Testament coexist. Hallelujah. So let's read very fast from Romans uh, 13, 10 to 8, and see what it is, says. Romans 13, uh, 8 to 10. This is the word of God. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be, are summed up in this one rule, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. You see, the Moses law was not that comprehensive. But this law of love sums up every law, every law of Moses plus other laws which are not, uh, which are not uh, included in the law of Moses. For example, the law of Moses does not tell us to love our enemies. But in the new law of love, the Lord himself tells us to love our enemies. He says that if you love the one who loves you, what have you done? There's nothing you have done. The real love is when you love your enemy. But that does not is not included in the law of, of Moses. Let us read from Luke 6, 27 to 28, so that you can understand that, uh, that point clearly, that the law of Moses was not that comprehensive, but the law of love is more comprehensive. Luke 6, 27 to 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Hallelujah. That is not included in the law of Moses. So the law of uh, love is more comprehensive. That's why the, 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 the Lord brought up this law of love, which includes the law of Moses. Hallelujah. Uh, the only law which Jesus nullified is the Sabbath rest and other ceremonial laws. Let us go to Mark 2 and 28. Mark 2 and 28, he says, uh, the son of man is even the master of, uh, of Sabbath. So that law uh, of, of Sabbath rest was nullified. It's one of the laws that the Lord nullified, but not the whole, the whole of the, the law of Moses. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Remember that time when the Pharisees were, uh, were accusing him and his disciples for picking corn on Sabbath, which was unlawful. Un unlawful. But that's the reaction. That's how Jesus told them that he himself is the, is the Lord even of the Sabbath. What does that mean? That we have our rest in Jesus Christ. We have our rest from the deeds of unrighteousness in Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, when you read the uh, Colossians, Colossians, uh, Colossians, when you read Colossians 2, Colossians 2 from 16, to 17. This is what it says. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or Sabbath day. These were ceremonial laws. These are the laws that we are done away with in the Old Testament. I mean, these are the laws that we are done away with in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we are not supposed to follow these ceremonial laws, including the Sabbath 
the Sabbath laws. But the whole law of Moses plus other laws are all in the new law of love, which is which you're supposed to obey. Hallelujah. The New Testament is not independent of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, man was depending on his efforts to do the will of God. But in the New Testament, we depend on the truth in Jesus' teaching and through the Holy Spirit to do God's will. In the Old Testament, there was no Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Man was just depending on his effort to obey the will of God. The same things which were done in the Old Testament are being done in the New Testament, but guided by the truth in Jesus' teaching and made possible by the grace of God. For example, in the Old Testament, uh, people used to sacrifice animals uh, as a way of cleansing their sins. Hallelujah. Paul tells us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice for God's sake. In Romans 12, uh, 1 to 2. So in the Old Testament, people were sacrificing animals. In the New, Test in the New Testament, we are sacrificing uh, the desires of the flesh. This is what the Paul toys talks about in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. He goes on ahead and says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. So, in the Old Testament, we are sacrificing animals. In the New Testament, we are uh, sacrificing our bodies in the form of doing away with the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. In the, in the, in the Old Testament, people were uh, uh, burning incense. You know the, the act of burning incense? And in, in the way of pleasing God. Hallelujah. But in the New Testament, look at what incense we, we, are, we, are, we are giving up, we are giving to God. In the Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, 2, uh, 15 to 16. We are still giving God incense, but the spiritual incense, not the physical incense. Hallelujah. It reads, uh, for we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Hallelujah. This is what Paul talks about, that we are an aroma of Christ to God. When you do what is right before God, when you conduct your life according to Jesus' teaching, you are like an aroma of Christ to God. That's what it means. That through Jesus Christ, through believing in Jesus Christ, and through conducting one's life according to that same teaching of Christ, that person is like an aroma of Christ to God. Hallelujah. But in the Old Testament, we are used to, to burn incense which could give a physical aroma to God. That was Old Testament. In the New Testament, our aroma is spiritual. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, it was a physical circumcision. Hallelujah. But you, you look at what the, the circumcision uh, that takes place. You look at the circumcision that takes place in the New Testament. And uh, that is Colossians. Uh, Colossians uh, 2, 
uh, 10 to 11. Hallelujah. Uh, it says, And in Christ you have, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh, but was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Hallelujah. So the Old Testament is circumcision was physical. The New Testament circumcision is through Christ we are putting off our old self, the old uh, way of living against the will of God. The old self of disobedience was put away through believing in Jesus Christ and doing, uh, conducting our lives according to his teaching. Hallelujah. So you can see the Old Testament and the New Testament coexist. Hallelujah. So all the laws in the Old Testament, like the ones against the statues uh, in Leviticus 19:28, uh, the ones against women putting on trousers in Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5, uh, the ones against makeup in Jeremiah 4, 30, uh, and other laws of Moses are all binding to us as Christians. So there is nothing like uh, the Old Testament was cancelled until Hello. Pastor Chris reads for us a scripture which says the Old Testament was cancelled. I'll continue thinking that he is misleading Christians by telling them that the Old Testament was cancelled. There is no scripture which says that the Old Testament was cancelled. That is his own mind. Hallelujah. There had to be a new priesthood and there had to be a new law. Are you hearing this? Now the interesting thing is this. We are not Oh dear Lord Jesus. Okay. Catch it if you can, alright? We are not practicing the New Testament as it were. We are the result of that New Testament. The New Testament made us possible. It gave birth to us. That's why the new law, which was based on the New Testament, is not applicable to us as a law. Listen, the new law is love. But it is not applicable to us as a law. Now, you listen to such confusion that the new law is love, but it is not applicable to us as a law. That is very ambiguous. It is a confusing statement. How can a law be given, yet it is not applicable to us as a law? If it is not applicable to us as a law, then why, how is it applicable to us? That is confusion and... Uh, and, the, and misleading statements. The law of love is applicable to us because the Lord gave it to us as the comprehensive law. A law that combines all the laws and all the prophets. It is well stated in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Let's read that scripture very fast. Matthew uh, 22. Uh, 36 to 40. Hallelujah. 
uh, let's read it very fast. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it is. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. These two commandments. But here is the, uh, Pastor Chris, confused Pastor Chris. But I don't think he's confused. He only wants to confuse the listener. Because he's telling us that the new law is not applicable to us as a law. Then why was it given to us in the first place? Jesus is not confused. He's not a confused a person like uh, Pastor Chris or like the way Pastor Chris wants to confuse us. He gave us the law to be applicable in our lives. He goes on in the First Corinthians 13 uh, through Paul, he tells us how we are supposed to love. Love is, is kind. Love is patient. Love is not self-seeking. He gave us all those uh, principles of love. He told us how to love in First Corinthians 13. But here is the pastor who is telling us that the new law of love is not applicable to us as a law. What a paradox. What a very, very ambitious, ambiguous statement. This confusing preacher is saying the Old Testament and the laws therein were cancelled. Now, when it comes to the New Testament law of love, he says it is not applicable to us as a law. If we go by his confusing teaching, we shall end up not obeying any laws of God. But I think any serious Christian must not listen to such spiritual rubbish. It is confusing philosophy. And the Bible talks about such confusing philosophies in Ephesians 4, verse 14 to 15. And later on, we shall uh, look at Colossians 2 and verse 8. Uh, this is the word of God in uh, Ephesians 4, 14 to 15. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Hallelujah. This uh, scripture, I thank God for it because it aligns very well with the uh, Oyakilome's teaching. Hallelujah. So let us go to Colossians, let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather on Christ. This is the word of God. So, Pastor Chris thought he could take us, he could take the whole world by his deceptive hollow philosophy, but the Holy Spirit has led uh, some of us uh, to come and expose the deceitfulness in his teachings. Hallelujah. So, this is the, the problem we have among people who we think represent God, yet they represent themselves or they represent the devil himself. Hallelujah. This man was using holy philosophy to make his gullible uh, listeners believe he was preaching the truth. How can Jesus give us a law which is not applicable to us? Hallelujah. I want us to compare between an enemy and a false teacher. And using scriptures, we shall find out who is more dangerous. Hallelujah. Now, we have a question here. An enemy, for example, someone who wants to, to kill you and take away your land. And a false teacher, like Chris or Yakiromi, who is more dangerous? 
we are going to answer this question using scriptures. Let us turn very fast to Luke 6, uh, verses 27 to 28. This is what the word of God talks about enemies. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Now, when it comes to, uh, to, a false, to a false teacher or a false preacher, like Chris Oyakilome, let us turn to Second uh, John uh, chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, and see what the same word of God talks about such people. Anyone who does not stay with the teaching of Christ but goes beyond it does not have God. Whoever does stay with the teaching has both the Father and the Son. So then, if some come to you who do not bring this teaching, do not welcome them in your homes. Do not even say, peace be with you. For anyone who wishes them peace becomes their partner in the things they do. Hallelujah. I think you can see uh, the difference between an enemy and a false teacher. When it comes to uh, an enemy, the Bible tells us to love our enemies, do good to them, pray to go, pray to, for them. But when it comes to false teachers, the, 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 the language of the word of God changes. I like this in the, uh, verse 10. So then, if, so then, if some come to you who do not bring this teaching, do not welcome them into your homes. Do not even say, peace be with you. Hallelujah. It, is, it is, looks like a very harsh language, but that is what uh, false teachers deserve. Because such a person who preaches to you falsehood is worse than your enemy who wants to kill you and take your land, for example. Because he is targeting to send your soul to hell by feeding it on spiritual poison. People like Oyakirome, uh, Chris, they feed our souls with the spiritual poison. If you take it, your soul is dead. Hallelujah. But your enemy, even if he wants to kill you, he will only kill the body. And if you have been working right with God, you will have eternal life in heaven forever and ever. And ever. So, uh, according to scriptures, uh, a false teacher is worse than an enemy, for example, wants to kill you and take your land. Hallelujah. So you grow up in that direction. Like others say, in our place, we don't eat this. In our place, we don't do this. You have a new mentality. In our place. You're from another place. The real place. God's place. Hallelujah. You say, what's his name? Zion. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, in the world, a lot of people think that uh, Israel is Zion. Because they used to talk a lot about Zion. Well, the Bible shows that Israel is not Zion. There is the Israel of the flesh. And then the Bible talks about the Israel of God. And the church is that Israel of God. Zion. The heavenly city. Praise God. That's where I belong. Say it with me. That's where I belong. Sickness doesn't belong there. Poverty doesn't belong there. Failure doesn't belong there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now this man, the master of deception, I like to call him like that because he's really manipulative. He has mastered the art of deception. Uh, he's saying, 
that when you receive salvation, it means your life is from above. Your life is from the heavenly city, where poverty does not belong, failure does not belong, uh, sickness does not belong. It is not true that salvation life equates to that of heavenly city. Actually, the walk in salvation is not a bed of roses. Even uh, Apostle Paul attests to that in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 23-27. Listen to what he says. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, from verse 23 to 27. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I, were, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was, pelt, I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored, I have toiled, I have often gone without sleep, I have known hunger and thirsty. I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Hallelujah. That is what Paul went through in his work for God and in his work for salvation. Even Jesus Christ himself, he talks about it in John 16, 33, and he says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but that, take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, what that, what that means is that uh, there are a lot of challenges in salvation because now you have left the world of uh, living a world, like a worldly person to the life of living according to the will of God. Before you go to salvation, before you confess Jesus, you could uh, sometimes tell a lie to get money. Or you could uh, sometimes uh, do anything you want. You, you could, do, uh, for example, go out with anyone at any time you want. You could drink. Uh, you could enjoy life in one way or another, but uh, the way you finance your life is, is not according to the will of God. You can, you, some people, could, before they got saved, they were thieves. Some people were liars. Uh, through lying, they could get money. So when you, uh, you receive Christ, you can no longer go back to such life. So there is somehow life becomes more harder. Uh, life becomes harder when you receive salvation. Hallelujah. When you receive salvation, you have to forgive and forget uh, for example, when uh, someone you demand some money from someone and he doesn't pay it, forgiveness means you 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 forgive him and even don't don't, don't take him to, to to the authorities to give you back your money. Don't take him to police. That's what salvation means. So there's a way life becomes harder when you receive Christ. So, but and this is the, what Paul also was going through. He could do sometimes get uh, could become hungry without food, I could become thirsty, he was beaten. So um, we are not saying salvation is a, is, a, is, a poor, is a bad decision, but as you go through that, you know that there is a promise after, after you, you endure up to the end. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ tells us that the one who endures up to the end will be saved and you receive eternal life. Hallelujah. So uh, Pastor Chris, by saying that when you receive Christ, your life does belongs like uh, to a heavenly city. Your life is like that of heavenly city, uh, heavenly city, where there is no poverty and sickness. It is not right. When you preach such uh, such things, when you tell 
uh, someone who was not yet uh, who like to go into salvation when you preach to him such such message he will think let me get saved and life becomes better and unfortunately when he, 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 he confesses Christ life may not become better it may not it may even become worse and when he finds that what he was told by by, by someone like pastor Chris like that, that he life will be better you your life will not uh, involve poverty and uh, and sickness when he finds that he has got saved and life has become harder he's discouraged he asks himself what what kind of life is this i was told when i get saved life will become better so he's discouraged to walk to continue in the work uh in the work of salvation but we should do really we people we, we preachers should tell people the truth that salvation is not a bed of roses challenges will be met but by the grace of god when you cling to god he will get away he will make a way for you to go through the challenges you will move with him in the challenge i mean his challenges he will get your hand and walk with you hallelujah do you know why most people believe such naked lies the answer is in second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 10 to 12. This, this is what it reads. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness hallelujah most christians enjoy such sugar-coated gospel because it's comfortable it does not involve the hard truth in the gospel of christ of christ jesus they don't like a gospel like uh, matthew 7 21 23 which says everyone not everyone who says lord lord will enter heaven except the one who does the will of my father in heaven they don't like such gospel hallelujah they don't like gospel like in the script the one in the in the, in hebrews 10 26 to 28 which says if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth no sacrifice for sins is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Most Christians don't like such gospel. Hallelujah. They like the false gospel which does not point to their sins. Such people are like women. A woman does not uh, mind about telling her lies as long as such lies are sweet in her ears. I was uh, talking to one of uh, the couples sometimes back, and the woman said, this man does not praise me. I asked her, what if he praises you, yet he is telling you lies? The woman answered, I don't give a damn. You see? That she does not mind about the, the, the lies. Eh? The lies she's being told. As long as it is sweet in her ears. Most Christians have itching ears. All they want to hear is the sweet gospel, even if it is Let's look at lies. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their eating, itching ears want to hear. They will gather themselves around them a great number of teachers like Chris Oyakilome to say what their itching uh, ears want to hear. In, conclu in conclusion, I had started following Pastor Chris, but the Spirit of God told me to first listen to his teachings about real issues of concern in salvation. Issues like sin, repentance, forgiveness, etc. That is when I landed on his teachings like quit seeking God. 
He was telling people to quit seeking God. Yet Isaiah, 5, uh, Isaiah 55 and verse 6 tells us to seek God while he may be found. His explanation for not seeking God was full of confusion and lies. That motivated me to search more about his teachings. Then I landed on other teachings like masturbation is not sin against God. God has nothing to do with it. Drinking is not sin, but getting drunk is sin. We are not supposed to ask for forgiveness. It is sin. So many teachings which are questionable. Which teachings are full of lies, manipulation, and twisting God's word. Preachers like Oyakirome can talk about obvious sweet things like you are a child of God, God loves you, if you pray in Jesus' name, you will receive whatever you pray for, etc. But when it comes to real issues of concern in salvation, issues like forgiveness, repentance, sin, obedience to God's law, you hear them twisting God's word and telling sweet lies in order to make you, the listener, believe their word, not the word of God, so that you perish the way they are perishing. It's like a man who only wants to enjoy sex with a woman, but does not want to marry her. He can talk about the obvious sweet things like you are the most beautiful creation of God. Come on, you are more beautiful like Be than Beyonce, such things. But when it comes to the real issues of concern, like taking him to her parents for introduction, when it comes to wedding issues, he starts telling lies like, let me first raise money for a car so that we can go to your parents while driving. Hallelujah. What Pastor Chris and other false preachers do when it comes to the real issues of concern in salvation, issues like sin, repentance, the law of God, they start telling lies so that the listener does not know the truth about such important issues. Let us end our, uh, our discussion with the, a reading in uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human traditions and the basic principles of this world, rather than on Christ. We are supposed to depend on Christ. If Jesus, in Matthew 5 and verse 17, says, I did not come to abolish the law, but rather to fulfill it, then who is Chris Oyakilome to tell God's people that the law of God was abolished? May God